When I first saw the JBL Live Beam 3, my immediate reaction was, why? Why does my TWSS carry case need a display? Now, once I started using it, there were many things I realized I could do on it without having to reach for my phone. Stay with me till the end to know why I'm saying that. Hi, I'm Aishad. You're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. So let's talk about the smart display with the case first. And of course, you can do a lot of things on this display itself without having to, you know, open the app on the phone. For example, you can control the music playback. You can adjust the volume levels. You can switch between ANC, talk through mode and ambient aware modes. You can cycle through the EQ settings. So you can even use Find My Buds and set a timer so music playback switches off after, you know, the timer ends. You can toggle the autoplay on and off. You can change the brightness levels of the display. In fact, you can even use the display as a makeshift flashlight. And apart from this, you've got custom lock screen wallpapers, which gives a little bit of a personal touch. And you can even mirror the notifications that come to your phone on this display. And you can even answer phone calls if you'd like. It's a capacitive touchscreen, so the touchscreen response is fairly decent. It's also fairly bright and colorful as well. One of the things I like about having the display on the case is the fact that you can actually have immediate visibility of the case's battery life and the Bud's battery life as well. I'm just thinking out loud here. Imagine if JBL had added some sort of internal storage to this case or maybe a memory card slot so you could upload your audio files to this and use this as a standalone music player or um, an mp3 player from the past ah the nostalgia for more such boomer takes, subscribe to Track and Take English. Now, the case does feel slightly bulky and heavy compared to other truly wireless buds in this price category, but you get the display and of course you get a larger battery, which is great for good battery life. I'll talk about that soon as well. Despite that, it's still pretty pocketable. It's not like the Lipertech Tevis case, which was like massive, remember? You also get a Type-C port for charging. You get a power button to switch the display on and off as well. You get a convenient lanyard loop and the hinge is made of metal and it's a pretty decent quality. And it's time for Air Shots live yank test. Let's do this. <laughs> it fell off. So yeah, the magnets could have been slightly stronger. The buds themselves have a very short stem. They're very comfortable to wear and use actually. For my ear type, they're very, very comfortable. And apart from that, the silicon tips that you get inside the box are super soft too. So long listening sessions are definitely not gonna be a problem on these buds. Apart from that, you also do get IP55 ratings. So yeah, I mean, workouts are gonna be not a problem. Now, while there are a lot of things that you can change from the smart case display, there are a few things that you still need the JBL Companion app for. And I'll tell you what it is. For example, if you want to check the fit, if it's right for you, you can do it through the setting in the app. Now, I suggest that if any TWS buds give you fit tests, then do take it primarily because you get the fit right and you get the bass right. There's a smart talk setting, which basically lowers the volume of the music the moment you start talking and it works well. There's also a personal sound amplification. So in the ambient aware mode, you can amplify the sound of the environment around you. If you're stuck in traffic, then you can change the levels to make the traffic sound louder. So you definitely don't miss someone honking behind you. There's also the option to switch off the automatic play pause, which you can't do on the display. So what this mode does is basically it picks up the call automatically when you're listening to music if the buds are in your ear. Now, if you want to remap the touch controls, then you can do that only from the companion app. And the touch controls on these are so well tuned. They're perfectly sensitive. They have the perfect amount of latency between the touch and, you know, the gesture being registered. Very well done, JBL. But you know what? I saved the best for last and it's called private call mode. So basically, if you're taking a call, you can use one earbud to take the call and the other earbud as only the mic to talk to the person, which <laughs> was really nice. All right, so the features list of the JBL Live Beam 3 is pretty extensive, but let's finally talk about the sound, probably the reason why you're watching this video. So in the default EQ, you get the signature JBL sound, which means that the sound is a little bass forward. But for the purpose of this review, I actually used the studio EQ, which I felt was really good because it pulls down the bass a little bit. In fact, I think this is the first JBL product that I've tested with high-risk certification and LDAC codec support as well. Now, even if I tested in the studio equalizer setting, there is a lot of mid-bass growl that I could feel in the sound it's actually very, very good. So Muse has this fantastic song called Hysteria and in that, the bass comes in thick, heavy and it's pounding. Truth be told, I didn't expect the bass to be this good so I was kind of taken aback in a good way, of course. In fact, I expected the bass to bleed into the mids which didn't happen, thankfully. There was no auditory masking, at least in my experience. I think one of Rehman's most underrated albums is May Madam. I love the songs in that album and I use it constantly for testing and Margali Puve is one of my favorite tracks to test. You get that signature sublime synth and bass line running in the background 
and there is Shobha Shankar's vocals that come through very raw. All of that has been reproduced really well without any masking of sorts on the GBL Live Beam 3. In fact, when Shobha goes high, I expected the mids to get shouty. That didn't happen either. But the higher treble regions sometimes do sound slightly thin. They could have been slightly thicker and there's a little bit of a roll off as well. So I'd say it's a bit of a balanced sound with a little bit of a bass heft, mid bass heft to make it slightly more exciting. Also, while the imaging or the instrument separation is really good, you can gently listen to all the instruments in the mix and even the tone Tonality is pretty decent. The sound staging could have been better. It's not very wide sounding. The other good thing is that the Live Beam 3 responds very well to JBL's very own custom equalizer. So if you're somebody who likes to tinker with the frequency range, then you can do it at granular level as well, which is very, very nice. There's also this personified 3.0 setting with which you can sort of listen to a test that JBL runs through your ears and then creates a custom EQ for you. But truth be told, I prefer the manual EQ mode. So overall, if you look at it, it's a slightly dark sounding, balanced uh, sound signature which is suited for most genres like if you listen to rock, pop, Bollywood, hip-hop, uh, EDM, all of that works but if you want to listen to nuances in classical music then these might not be suited for you. Alright, how's the ANC on this? It works fairly well. Although there's also true adaptive ANC technology that uses four noise sensing mics to adjust the level of audio around you. But what I prefer is JBL's transparency mode which is called ambient aware which is kind of natural sounding which is good. So there are six mics in total on the JBL Live Beam 3, three on each housing and they're some of the best mics I've tested till date. Till now, you're listening to the sound recorded by the lapel mic that is attached to my shirt. But now you're going to be listening to the sound recorded through the JBL Live Beam 3. Of course, this is professional. This is a pair of TWS buds and yet it sounds very good. That's not it. Of the six mics, you get two beam forming mics as well. So what this does is very interesting too. When you make calls to somebody, you can change the setting or the equalizer setting of your voice or the person on the other end as well. You have the option to switch between natural increased treble and increased bass. And it's not just the mics, even the battery life on the JBL Live Beam 3 is absolutely fantastic. So I got nine hours of continuous playback from these buds with ANC and LDAC on. For a pair of flagship TWS buds, I've tested a bunch on this channel already, like the Enco X2 or the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro or OnePlus Buds 2 Pro. <laughs> it's just better than all of them. So the JBL Live Beam 3 surprised me. It's actually a rock solid product with a lot of features and most of these features actually work really well too. And the cherry on top, if you consider it one, is the smart display because it can be useful sometimes. Because I realized that since the display is there, I was using it to control my buds instead of using the phone. But you guys know me, this is an audio product. It needs to sound good and thankfully JBL doesn't disappoint because the Live Beam 3 is easily the best sounding JBL product that I've tested till date. Plus the mic quality is excellent and you get fantastic battery life as well. All of these things put together, you get a very well-rounded product. All right, that's been my time. Let me know your thoughts on the Live Beam 3 in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.